Hey there. In this video, we are going to install Cloudera Manager or CDH on a cluster or a three node cluster on Google Cloud Platform. So without much ado, let's get started. So first, to access Google Cloud Platform, we are going to use or sign up for a Google Cloud free tier access. I'm going to show you what that is and what services are available for you and what's the time period. So here are the steps that we are going to cover. First, we are going to get a Google Cloud free tier access. Next, we are going to log into the Google Cloud dashboard. Then we'll create a project before we can actually start creating the virtual machines. Next, once a project is created, we'll create the virtual machines. Then we'll log into each of the VMs via SSH and perform some modifications. Then we are going to download the Cloudera Manager. Then depending on what is accessible for us through the browser, we are going to add or delete some of the firewall rules. And finally, we are going to start the Cloudera Manager installation through the UI. So first, let's get on to getting the access for the Google Cloud free tier. Okay, so if you go to cloud.google.com slash free, so here uh, it basically asks for a username password. So all you need is a, a Gmail ID. So here you don't see the sign in option because I've already signed in. So if you go here, uh, GCP free tier, here you can see it asks for uh, a sign in. So here what you get is you get a 12 month free trial with $300 credit to use uh, any of the GCP services. Okay, and uh, here are some of the eligibility for the program and the restricted actions that uh, are there. And when you are signing in for uh, Google Cloud free access, you also need to give the credit card details so that Google can verify it's indeed you who are signing up. So what they're going to do is they're going to take $1 for verification and then reverse it back. Okay, and uh, here you can see uh, as part of the Google Cloud Compute Engine, what are the uh, VM instances per month and what are the regions that are free and the size of hard disk and the snapshots that are available for the free tier access. So if, you, if you're not signed in, what I uh, suggest is go back and sign in here and provide your credit card details so that you have access to GCP. And uh, here you can see uh, the number of requests or the cap that are uh, that is there in the Google Cloud uh, free tier. So you can have a 2 million requests per month, uh, 1 GB of storage for a scalable NoSQL DB. Okay, and uh, Compute Engine micro, one micro instance, F1 micro instance. And uh, here are the various uh, uh, quotas that are available for us. Okay. So what we can do is uh, directly go to cloud.google.com or you can click on console.cloud.google.com and if you're logged in and all the payment details are available, it will directly take you to the Google Cloud dashboard. So here uh, I've also received $300 credit and here you can see that I've been using for for last few days and uh, uh, now it says uh, what's the quota left and what's the amount pending. So here you can see once you're logged in, uh, you're taken to the dashboard where you can see uh, the project info, okay, the project ID and others. Uh, so in this video, we are not going to do a deep dive into the uh, dashboard. So if you quickly go to the billing section, here you, you can see uh, the total free trial available and the number of days remaining. Okay, uh, so next is let's quickly go to our project. I'll go to the compute engine, click on the VM instances. Okay, so here you can see uh, there are no VM instances and it asks you to create a a VM instance or import it. But before that, just make sure that you are in the right project. 
okay so what you can do is you can cl click on this uh, inverted arrow uh, select the project so by default when you are accessing for the first time a default project is created and you can change the name of it or you can create a new project okay so I've already created a couple of projects for me I'm going to use this big data project for a demo okay so let's go back and create uh, three VMs for our work So I'm going to name my first instance master one and I'm not going to change the region or zone and for a demo I'm going to use uh, one CPU a virtual CPU 3.75 GB uh, system a standard one and uh, I'm going to select my VM image I'm going to go with the CentOS select the SSD size is 30 GB so here you can see uh, you have RHEL, SUSE and other versions. So depending on your interest, you can check some of these, but make sure uh, what versions are supported by the uh, specific version of the Cloudera Manager you are going to use. Okay, so once a VM image is selected, uh, boot image is selected, go to the access scope and select the second one, allow full access to all the cloud APIs. Under the firewall, select allow HTTP and HTTPS and then hit create okay so in the meanwhile we are also going to create two more nodes node 1 and node 2 and the boot image is going to be CentOS 7 And the final instance, node 2. Okay, so as you can see, our two of three nodes are already created. And you can clearly see the internal IPs of those hosts and the external IPs. So what we are going to do is uh, uh, as a next step, we have to make some uh, modifications, log into the systems and make some modifications. So how are we going to log into the system? So again, it's going to be pretty easy. We are going to use the SSH. So what we'll do is uh, uh, next to the SSH, uh, click the icon here and select the open in browser window. So what this option does is it's going to generate SSH key and transfer that to the VMs instantly. So let me also log into node one and node two. Okay, so here you can see, uh, you can change the font size or the color by clicking the gearbox here. So as you can see by default, you're logged in as um, HD user and I'm going to log in as uh, sudo, sudo hyphen i. So first thing is make sure uh, IP tables are off. So if the service is running, just stop it. So I don't have any of these. Next. Let's stop the currently running security enhanced Linux or stay Linux. Set and force zero. Next step, uh, let's modify the SE Linux policy. VA slash etc. SE Linux config. So go to this particular line SE Linux and modify the enforcing to disabled and reached out. Then next go to the slash etc slash ssh sshd config. Here search for authentication. So modify this line permit root login equal to yes. Next search for password. 
So enable this particular line password authentication, yes, and comment out this particular line. Next also enable the challenge response authentication to yes, and comment out this no line. Okay, so once these changes are done, let's modify the password for the root user. Okay, so once these changes are done, reboot the system. So in the meanwhile, we also make the changes in node 1 and node 2. The same changes what we have done. sudo i set enforce 0 slash etc sc linux config set it to disabled slash etc slash ssh slash sshd config authentication make it to s password and comment this and comment this portal line similarly challenge response authentication should be s yes, and comment out the below line write it out change the password of the root user so once the changes are done reboot the system so I want to connect to node 1 again So let's uh, make the same changes to the node 2 as well. sudo hyphen i set n40 slash etc sc linux config set it to disabled. slash etc ssh sshd config search for authentication make the root login to yes search for password make password authentication to s comment out the no line similarly enable the line of challenge response authentication yes and comment on this no line okay so now let's change the password of the user. And let's reboot this. Again, I don't want to connect to the system. Let's go back to our master one. Let's log in as root. Let's see if we have the required software here. For example, wget. OK, so I don't have wget here. What we are going to do is we are going to install this in the first place. yum hyphen y install wget. Okay, so as you can see, wget has been installed. Now let's uh, download the Cloudera Manager. So we are going to download the CM5 or Cloudera Manager latest version of 5. We're not going to use the 6. So depending on your requirement, you can also download or go ahead with the version 6. So I'll leave the links in the description. So wget http archive.cloudera.com Cloudera Manager installer.bin. Okay, so now let's uh, do a ch more. Okay, so I think we are good. Okay, so uh,
okay so we don't have java don't worry uh, cloud or manager is going to install that so you can see this uh, installation script running you have to just uh, select next and accept the license let's accept the license it's going to install the j2 sdk 1.7 so as you can see uh, it has installed the cloud error manager and the, the, this is a url http master one colon seven one eight zero and the username and password is going to be admin admin so hit enter for ok ok so now let's uh, take this particular external ip Or first we can try with uh, accessing with the master one and 7180 okay we are not going to resolve that as of now so what we'll do is we'll use the external IP and access the Cloudera manager UI So as you can see, we are not able to reach this port. Uh, so for this, what we need to do is uh, we'll go to the VPC, go to the uh, dashboard, and from there you can go to the VTC, VPC network and go to the firewall rules. So we need to create a new firewall rule which allows the port 7180. Okay, so I'm going to give a name of cloudera-7180. Uh, priority can be 100,000 targets. I want this to be allowed for all the instance, instances in this particular network. And I source IP range 0.0.0.0 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 slash 0. And then I'm going to select the TCP and put the port 7180. Okay, so as you can see, we have created this particular uh, firewall. Now let's go back and hit this URL. Voila. So now we are able to access our particular port on this server running. Let's log into this using admin admin. Okay, so here let's accept the license for the cloud era. Hit continue. And now what we can do is, uh, depending on your choice, you can either go with Cloudera Express, which is free always, or you can uh, check the trial of uh, Cloudera Enterprise 60 days. After 60 days, it's going to revert to the Cloudera Enterprise. So I'm going to select the first option, hit continue. Okay, so as you can see, uh, we, are, we are checked Cloudera Express 5.16.2. Let's hit continue. Okay, so let's specify the host machine names or the IP addresses. So here what you can do is, uh, let's go back to the VM instances. You can either give the internal IPs or the host names directly into the box here. Master one, node one, node two. So once this is done, hit search. Okay, so as you can see, all the three hosts have been found. Hit continue. Here, what we'll do is, uh, again, you have uh, two methods to install. One is using packages, or the second one is using parcels. I prefer using parcels here. So let's go ahead with parcels, and all the other options are fine. You don't need to change them. Hit continue. So under the accept JDK license, select install Oracle Java AC development, hit continue. So there's nothing in this page you have to select, hit continue. Okay, so here uh, you can use another user like HD user, which is already there in the system, but uh, provided you have a created SSH keys. 
okay so if you have created ssh keys you can select the username and uh, provide the file or choose the file but in this case i'm going to go ahead with the uh, root user and this is a password which i've changed on all the three nodes if you remember correctly click continue So this is where the Clouder Manager will install the Oracle J2 SDK package, the Clouder Manager agent, Clouder agent, and the various statements. Okay, so as you can see, we have reached till this step, and all the packages are successfully installed, and the agent is sending the heartbeats to the manager. So let's hit continue. So uh, here Cloudera is manager is going to download the parcel. So again, depending on the version you have selected, if you have selected CDH version six and upper, it's going to take uh, a little bit more time because that uh, the package is heavy and bigger in size. Whereas uh, 5.x and 4.x are lower in size sizes. So all the parcels that you're going to download automatically all these are going to reside in slash opt slash cloudera slash parcels so only after the package is downloaded distributed unpacked and activated you can see them there okay so now as you can see the package has been downloaded distributed onto three nodes unpacked and activated so you can also see the icon status here of all the nodes and everything is in green so let's hit continue so this is a step where uh, the Cloudera manager is going to inspect the installation on all the nodes, okay, and do the validations. And as you can see, except uh, for two warnings which we can ignore, ignore everything is fine here. Let's hit next or finish. Okay, so we have reached the final stage here. Okay, so let's start with the cluster setup process. So as you can see here, you have various options. As you can go with the default core Hadoop, which comes with HDFS, Yarn, Zookeeper, Uzi, Hive, and Hue. Or you can go with the other extra services, or you can choose the services from the custom service the option here and select the service that are required for you. So for our demo, I'm going to go with the core Hadoop software. I click on continue. So as you can see, by default, uh, depending on the number of nodes you have, it's going to assign the name node, secondary node, uh, and to the master data nodes to the name nodes and so on. So you don't need to change anything here. You can click, hit on continue. So this is a database setup page where you have to either go with the embedded database, uh, which is not uh, supported on the production, but for our demo purpose, we can go ahead with it. Or if you want to use any of your existing database of Postgres, MySQL, or Oracle, you can choose the custom, use custom database option and select the required database. So let's go with the embedded database option and let's do a test connection here and hit continue. Okay, so as you can see on the review changes page, uh, you don't have to change most of the default values. So by default, HDFS blocks is 128 MB right so we can leave uh, most op options just like that and hit on continue so this is where uh, all the steps would be executed the client configurations will be deployed and one by one all the services are going to be started okay so once all the services are done uh, final step is the congratulations page where you are going to see the final success page okay so i'm going to skip uh, to the next step okay so let's log into our clouder manager so again go to port 7180 and it's going to show you the login page of the cloudera manager so here the username is going to be cloudera and cloudera it's not admin admin okay so once you're logged in you can see uh, there are some services which are in unhealthy state. 
So what you can do is you can, so either you can restart the entire Cloudera Manager service or you can restart only those services where you see there are health issues coming. Okay, so that's it for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed uh, this video. So thank you and uh, don't forget to subscribe uh, to my channel. Thank you.